Hey everyone, Mr. Voiken here, and we're just going to go through some of the review assignment that I gave you for the unit test, unit three and four. So let's start off with a triangle number one. Okay, now what we've got is a right angle triangle, and we're given that one angle is set to 45 degrees. And if I look directly across from the 90 degree, we can see that that sloped line is the hypotenuse and it will always be the hypotenuse. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reference angle uh, A down here and we're going to look directly across and that A would be our opposite. And if we have an opposite and we have a hypotenuse, that leaves side B as the adjacent. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is decide whether to solve A or B, and we'll just start off uh, logically here with A. Okay, now if I'm looking at A, what do I have? Well, I've got an opposite, and then I need to find a value, which is over here in the hypotenuse, and I'm gonna be using that angle. So I need to select my formula first, so opposite and hypotenuse. At the top of your test, you should be writing so, Ka toa. So opposite and hypotenuse is going to be that formula right there. So the way that's written out is sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now we need to substitute. So sine theta is 45 equals opposite, which is unknown, letter A, over the hypotenuse, which is 9 root 2. Now what I need to do is I need to isolate the A. The A needs to be on that side of the equal sign. Everything else needs to be on the other side. So I need to get rid of this 9 root 2. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 root 2. That will cancel these two on that side, leaving me with that isolated A. And now I just need to punch that into the calculator. And if you do punch that into the calculator, it's just like this, nine, and get the square root of two, and multiply that by the sine of 45. And you can see that we get 9.00000 times 10 to the zero. So I need to change the mode of this calculator right here really quick. I'll just put it into this normal mode. Uh, done and close. And if I hit enter again, you can see it just gives me a value of nine. Okay, so the answer to this is nine. Now it's actually saying to round this to the nearest tenth. Okay, well, again, if I go into the mode on my calculator and I'm going to set uh, this up so I can use a fixed um, value and I can save it to, you know, one decimal place, which should round for you, but uh, double check and make sure that it is rounding for you. Right now, I'm just going to put uh, three decimal places. Okay, and now I'll close this. Okay, and I'll hit enter again, and you can see it's giving me 9.000, so the answer is 9, and it's better written, really, if it's saying round to the nearest decimal, we'll put a 9.0. The other thing I want to check for is make sure, are there any units here? So, if this is just 9 root 2. It doesn't say 9 root 2 meters or centimeters, so no units are needed after that. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at solving uh, side B. Okay, well, for solving side B, I have I need to solve the adjacent. I have still have my angle of 45 degrees and this hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be the cosine. Okay, so we're going to write down the cos of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And if I look above here, I, I notice that I made a mistake right there. That should not be A, it should be that O 
right there. So I'm just going to quickly give that a little bit of a change there. That should be the O. Okay. And just be careful with that O. It sort of looks like a, um, oh, I see why I wrote A because it's side A. Okay. I guess that makes sense. So I might as well sort of keep this like that uh, and be consistent. So we're going to write down cos of theta, which is 45 degrees, equals the adjacent side, which is side B, over the H, which is 9 root 2. And if you notice, we got this exact same setup as up here, except we're going to be using cos. So what am I going to do? Multiply each side by 9, oops, not right there, by 9 root 2, and I'll multiply this one by 9 root 2. These, this 9 root 2 on the right side will cancel, isolating B, and now we're just going to punch this into the calculator again, which is 9 root 2. Make sure you pull yourself out of that because right now we're underneath that root, that radical sign. And we're going to put in the cos of 45. And you can see, hey, we get 9 again. So in this case, side B is equal to 9. And when you're on the test, if you were to circle or put a square around the answers, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to follow your work. And there we go. Question number one done. I'm going to do number two for you next. All right, so let's take a look at question number two. Now, again, we have a right angle triangle. It's just positioned a little differently. So let's start off again at the 90 degree angle. Go directly across from that, and we can label that as the hypotenuse. Across from the given angle opposite of that is our opposite and leaves the last one to be the adjacent okay now so again we were asked to solve both sides a and b so i'll start with a now what am i given here well if I've, i'm given the angle i'm asked to solve for a and i have another side here which is the adjacent so i have an a and an h and if i look up here that's going to be the cosine. So the cos of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. The cos of 30 degrees equals the adjacent, which has a value of 5 over the hypotenuse, which is unknown. Now in this case, we have the unknown uh, on the bottom part of this ratio right here, but it just takes an extra step to get uh, this equation put in the proper format so we're going to multiply both sides by h okay now what that's doing is it's removing the h off the bottom because those two cancel out but now as you can see the h is on the other side and it's not alone it needs to be on this side of the equal sign by itself so we need to get rid of that cos 30. so what it what is happening over here is it is h times the cos of 30 and just like if you had 6 times x we would divide by 6 so when we have um, cos 30 times h we're going to divide by cos 30 to remove it and whatever I do to one side I have to do to the other side so if we lay this out cos 30 equals or sorry h times the cos of 30 equals 5 and divide both sides by the cos of 30. It cancels on the left, leaving us with h only on the left side. And now I just need to punch this into the calculator. So 5 divided by cos 30. And I don't even think you really need to close the bracket. It comes up as 5.774. Okay, and again, what you want to do is go up here, round to the nearest tenth okay so don't forget to do that we don't want to lose marks okay so this is going to be h equals 5.8 now again on our calculator you should be able to use your calculator properly if i go to the m or the mode here so we know this is going to round to 5.8 if i go to mode and go back into here and i 
set this to only one decimal place, now when I hit enter, it should change this number to 5.8. And there it goes. So it does the work for you in this case. All right, so uh, solving side B would be exactly the same as I did solving side A, except we would be using the opposite and the adjacent, which means we'd be using the tan law. All right, well, let's move on to question number five. So this one's a little bit more advanced, but not really that much. It's just two triangles. And remember what I told you, if there's two triangles, always start with the triangle that has the most information. Try to figure out what you need to calculate in order to solve the second triangle. Now, if we look at this one right here, we can see that there is a 90 degree corner up at the top and this line is sort of splitting into two triangles also comes down perpendicular to the bottom line forming a 90 degree corner. So we know up here this is 90 degrees but it's formed up of one, two different angles. Hey, that looks like a smiley face. Okay, so basically if I figure out angle one right here and Angle two will be 90 minus angle one, and angle one will be 90 minus angle two because the total is 90 degrees right there. So let's start off with this triangle. Now, if you want to, it's you know, you can always take that triangle and sort of break it out if it's a little bit less confusing to sort of pull that down here, and we can see we've got a 12 right there a 16 and what am I trying to do solve that unknown angle right there which is going to be that side of that sort of 90 degree combination that's right there okay so I'll call this one triangle A just sort of like we had up above okay and um, so what am I trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out this uh, angle now I need to take a look and just remember this can be 90 degrees down there so it's directly across it's going to be my hypotenuse uh, directly across from the unknown angle or if it was known that angle that we're referencing will be my opposite and that leaves the other side being the adjacent so Right now I have an adjacent with a value of 12 and I have an opposite with a value of 16. So O and A, that is the tan formula. So we're gonna say tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan, still an unknown angle, equals opposite, which is 16, over adjacent, which is 12. So I'm trying to figure out whenever we have to figure out the angle, then we just need to use the inverse of that angle, that uh, function. So I'm going to say the angle equals the inverse of tan. 16 over 12, just put the ratio in there. And now you've rearranged that formula into a format that can be input into the calculator. Okay, so where is my mouse? Come on, let's clear that. And basically what we have to do is go second function tan. And you can see it already opens a bracket for me now. And I'm going to type 16 divided by 12. You could also use the um, fraction function in there as well. Close that bracket. And it says it's 53.1. Okay, so we are now going to say that theta is equal to 53.1 so that means this angle right here is 53.1 so what is that angle going to be right there well that is going to be 90 minus the 53.1 which is going to be 36.9 now you can do that in your head or you can punch it in on the calculator just to make sure you don't want to make any simple errors like that and we have 36.9 it is it confirmed okay so now basically I'm gonna go do the work over that side just because we're running out of room here but I'm gonna I'm gonna go steal this triangle out of there okay so I'll redraw it over here 
So I've got a triangle that looks like that. Okay. Um, that's my right angle down here. I know that this angle that's in here is going to be 36.9. Um, it says I need to calculate that side down there and we're still sharing this dimension of 12. So again, let's take a look at what we got directly across from 90. That's my hypotenuse directly across from the angle. That's my opposite. And that leaves the last one to be the adjacent. So we're going to be using the opposite because that's what we're calculating and the adjacent because that's the one that has a value and that angle. So adjacent and opposite again is the tan law. So tan, there, there, there. Uh, tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of the angle 36.9 equals opposite which is x over adjacent 12. Hey, we got to get rid of that 12. Multiply both sides by 12. That cancels these out. And now we basically are down to a calculator exercise where x is going to equal, and I can punch this in either as 12 tan 36.9 or 30 tan 36.9 times 12. Now let's punch it in like I see it, 12 tan 36.9 close the bracket if you want hit enter and it says the side is going to be nine everything's turning out to be nine what is going on and there's the final answer good job all right so now we're going to try question number let's do seven okay well this one we are given two sides and we're asked to solve the third side so uh, this is going to be using Pythagorean's theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared uh, if you notice up here I sort of changed that answer it's still nine but I put 9.0 because it says to the nearest tenth and fix that up there as well it's not really wrong but it's nice to have that decimal there if it is saying to uh, indicate it to that degree of accuracy there okay so um, in this case I want to take a look at what I have and because we're using c squared equals a squared plus b squared there's our formula Remember, the hypotenuse is always going to be C, and then the other two can be A and B, and it doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm getting C equals the square root of 10 squared plus 5 squared, and C equals uh, the square root of 100 plus 25. C equals the square root of 125. And at that point, you can just go again to your calculator, clear it, and we're going to use the square root of 125. Enter. We get C equals 11.2. And that sounds right because, remember, the hypotenuse needs to be the longest length. Uh, so we've got 10 and 5, so 11.2 is longer so before I finish this equation let's take a look find the missing side done round to the nearest tenth done and hey I've got some units right there that say feet so let's not forget to put those units in there feet and there we go answer complete done Okay, now that one was calculating the C, the hypotenuse, and I'm going to do number 8, which is going to be calculating either the A or B. But again, it's the same formula, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. But this time I want to uh, solve for one of the unknowns. So remember, directly across from the 90, just like we did here, is the hypotenuse which is always going to be C. So I'll just call this one A and the other one B. Okay, so basically what I want to be solving for is B. So now I know that B is going to be the square root 
of c squared minus a squared. Okay, and now we're just going to substitute the values in there. c is 10 squared minus uh, a, which is 5 squared, and we get b equals the square root of 100 minus 25, so b equals the square root of uh, 75, and if I punch that in the calculator, the square root of 75 is 8.7. So b equals 8.7. Again, I want to take a look, make sure I'm rounded to one decimal place, and then I have the correct units in here, which happens to be yards this time, so YD at the end, and final answer. All right, here we go. Question number 11, more triangles, more right angle triangles, crazy stuff. Okay, so this one's just a little bit more complex in the sense that we have two triangles instead of one. And remember what I said, just take a look at what we're trying to solve, which usually means we need to start with the other triangle first and solve a side or an angle that uh, the two are sort of sharing. Okay, that would complement both of these triangles. And remember, if you want to, you can redraw that one triangle and break it out if it makes it easier to deal with on its own. So in this case I'll do that. I'm going to say well I've got this triangle right here that's a right angle. I'm going to be wanting to solve what I would call x right now. Well, I won't call it x because there's another x down there so let's call that y. Uh, that's going to be this y right there that the two triangles share. This angle is at 45 degrees. The right angle is right there. And up top, we've got 8 root 6. So directly across from the 90 is my hypotenuse. Directly across from the angle is my opposite. And the last one is the adjacent. So I need to solve the hypotenuse. I'm given the opposite. So we've got to use the sine. So S sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse sine 45 equals opposite which is 8 root 6 over y okay uh, now what am I going to do multiply both sides by y that's going to cancel the y's and really what I'm going to end up doing here is dividing both sides by sine 45 that will cancel the sine 45s on this side. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with y on this side equals 8 root 6 divided by sine of 45. Okay, so just rewrite that out. It's a little bit more easy to see. y equals 8 root 6 divided by sine 45. Now it's a calculator exercise. Go to your calculator, and we're going to type in 8 root, whoa, close, where did I click? 8 root 6, get out of there, uh, divided by, um, where is it, sine 45, sine 45, and we get 27.7 okay so that is 27.7 now again uh, just sort of lacking some space so I'm going to take all of this stuff and move over to that side so I've got y equals uh, 27.7 okay now let's take a look at this second triangle that's sort of looking like that ish Okay, and I have a 90 degree right there. We just figured out the Y right here, which is basically that one, which happened to be 27.7. So 27.7. Uh, what else do I know? This angle is 60 degrees, and that's the side that we're solving right there. 
Okay, so again, directly across from the 90, that's my hypotenuse. Directly across from my angle, that's my opposite. Last one is going to be the adjacent. What do I want to solve? The hypotenuse. What am I given? The angle and the adjacent. So H and A is cosine. So cos of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, cos of 60 equals adjacent uh, 27.7 over the hypotenuse that we're calling x, multiply by x, multiply by x, x's cancel. Uh, now I'm going to divide by the cos of 60, divide by the cos of 60, cos 60's cancel on this side, whoa, 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 this x doesn't cancel on the left, what am I doing? Okay, so that wouldn't cancel over there, that's still going to be an x. Okay, so what are we left with? x equals uh, 27.7 divided by the cos of 60. Okay, and now I'll get x equals some number. So what are we going to type in? 27.7, which is already up there, so I might as well just go divided by, well, no, let's not do that. We'll punch it all in. 27.7 divided by the cos of 60, close the bracket, hit enter, and we got 55.4. And that would be your final answer. Okay, now let's move into some word problems. So question number 15, on a sunny day, who cares if it's sunny? The Eiffel Tower, whatever, it's some building not really that important. What is important is that it is 1,063 feet high. Okay, so let's go draw some land down here that's perfectly straight. And let's go draw our Eiffel Tower, which is perfectly straight, forming a 90 degree angle down here. And we know that this is 1,063 feet tall. Uh, it says it casts a shadow on the ground. So that means down here on the ground, we've got a shadow being cast. And how long is that shadow? Okay, so let's take a look. It casts a shadow on the ground. Um, doesn't say how long it is, but it says there is a tourist standing at the end. So, ooh, we don't want that. I'm going to go back to here. We'll make a alien green dude okay there's the tourist right there and what's happening so uh, apparently the sun is up in the sky up here it looks like a cloud but whatever and the tourist is looking at the sun right there let's move the sun down so it's in the right whoa 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 Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, and so he's looking at the sun and it's forming a angle of elevation. So an angle of elevation to the sun is 34.1 degrees. So again, I'm going to go down here and say this is 34.1 degrees. Okay, and there is our triangle. So what does it say? Determine to the nearest foot the length of the shadow, which is down here. So once you've got the drawing, it's actually quite simple from here. Here's our angle. There's our 90 degree, which means we look directly across from the 90 degree, like we've been doing. That's the hypotenuse. Directly across from my angle that I'm given, that is the opposite. And the last one is the adjacent. So what am I trying to solve for? I'm trying to solve for the adjacent. And what am I given? An angle and the opposite. So O for opposite, A, that would be the tan. So here we go, tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 34.1 degrees equals uh, opposite, which is 1,063 over 
uh, the adjacent, which is x. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to divide both sides by x. That's going to cancel my x's. What the heck? x is not alone, so what are we going to do? Divide by the tan of 34.1. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. The tan 34.1s cancel on the left, and we're left with the x equals 1063 over the tan of 34.1. Now we're just going to shove that into the calculator. And where are we? Clear. So 1063 divided by the tan of 34.1. One, close the bracket. It says that the X, the shadow, is 1,570. Now, what does it say? It says to round to the nearest foot. Okay, so we are rounded to the nearest foot. It is 1,570 feet. Now, ever since you have been doing math at school, your teacher has told you that when you do a word problem, you have a word response. So, the length of the shadow is 1,570 feet. Final answer. Okay, question number 16. Uh, let's see what we got here. So a boat, we got a boat and it's 300 meters away from the foot of a cliff. Cliff, what's a cliff? A cliff. So what do we know? Well, boats sit on water and there's a cliff right there. And in our imaginary uh, world of math, every cliff is, whoa, that's not perfectly straight now, is it? That's exactly what I wasn't trying to do. So let's go back and let's make that straight. There. Okay, so every time we have water, it's perfectly flat. Every time we have a cliff, it's perfectly vertical, forming a 90 degree corner down here. So there is a boat and he's 300 feet away. So we'll go over here, we'll draw our little boat. And we say that he is 300 feet away from the base of the cliff. The angle of elevation from the boat to the top of the cliff. So going from here to the top of the cliff right there is going to be an angle of elevation of 16 degrees. Okay, so that's the information we got so far uh draw a this information on a diagram and determine the height of the cliff to the nearest meter okay so what do we need to calculate that right there so let's take a look at what we got here again well there's my 90 degree which means that's going to be my hypotenuse there's my angle which means that's going to be my opposite and that leaves this with the adjacent so I'm trying to solve the opposite. I have the adjacent. Everything's tan law, it seems like. That's all we're getting here. So what are we gonna do? Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tan 16 equals opposite x over adjacent 300. Multiply both sides by 300. The 300s cancel. And I'm left with a calculator exercise, x equals 300 times the tan of 16. So clear 300 tan 16, close bracket, we get x. x equals 86.0. And does it tell us it's to the nearest uh, to the nearest meter? Nearest meter. Ah, so I've written that wrong down there. Uh, this is not feet, 300 feet. That's 300 meters. 
Good thing I checked. So my answer is in meters. That's my final answer as a numerical value. But again, remember, it's a written problem, so we get a written answer. The height of the cliff is 86.0 meters. Final answer. Beautiful. Okay, now uh, the second part of it. If the boat then sails 75 meters closer, so what is happening? Well, this little boat right here decides it's going to move closer. Okay, so if that moves closer, it is no longer at 300 meters. It was at 300 meters, which means that it is now at 75 meters closer, which is going to be, it's going to change all this stuff. Uh, what's the length of that going to be? 300 minus 75, 225. So it's at 225 meters now. Uh, we calculated the height of the cliff. It's no longer X. It is 86 meters. Okay, and it says to the nearest degree, so to the degree, not to the tenth of the degree, uh, what is the new angle of elevation to the top of the cliff? So basically they're saying what is this new line that's getting us up to there? What is that angle theta? right there. Okay, well, again, let's just get the setup first. That's gonna be my hypotenuse. That's gonna be my opposite. And this one will be my adjacent. So I don't have anything at the hypotenuse, so I won't use that. I'm gonna be using tan again. So tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent tan of the unknown angle equals opposite 86 over adjacent 225. Okay, and like I showed you before, if we are given, if we're solving the angle, if it, the angle is unknown, we're just gonna take the angle is going to equal the inverse of that operation, so the inverse of tan with that same ratio. So we reworked that formula into that, and now the angle is going to equal whatever I shove into the computer here, a little calculator. So I'll clear this up and we'll go second function tan of 86 divided by 225, close the bracket and we get 20.9. So it's 20.9. Now, if we look right here, it's saying to the nearest degree. The nearest degree is right there, not there, no. Okay, so the angle is going to equal 21 degrees. The units are important here, so the units are degrees. You need to include that, and there we go. Our uh, angle of elevation from the boat that moved closer to the cliff is 21 degrees. So again, what do we need to do? We need to write this out. Uh, the, ooh. the new angle of elevation is 21 degrees. Final answer. Okay, I just copy and pasted question number 17 onto this uh, fresh page because there was no place to actually do all the work. Uh, so let's just start off here first by uh, completing the sketch of the illustrated situation. Okay, so what do we have? A totem pole, again, who cares what it is? But is it is being placed in a two meter deep hole in the ground. Okay, so essentially what we've got here is we've got ground and we got a totem pole and instead of being all above the ground, a little portion of it goes below the ground and it said that that is two meters that goes below 
the ground. Okay, so let's just take a look. The totem pole is being placed in a two meter deep hole. Da -da -da -da, into the ground. Two ropes. So two ropes attached to the top of the totem pole are used to pull the pull are used to pull the totem pole upright. So really what we've got whoa, don't want that. What we've got here now are two ropes. There's one rope. And there's the other rope. Approximately. Okay, the ropes are anchored to the ground. So that means they're attached to the ground. And they remember they came from the top down to the ground um, on opposite side of the pole. So one's on that side of the pole, one's on that side of the pole. It looks good so far. Uh, each rope is 19 meters long. 19, 19, meter, meter. Uh, and is anchored into the ground 12 meters from the center. So that means this is 12 meters and that would be 12 meters going from the center over to this point right there. And same with this one from the center over to the anchor point right there. So. We know this would form a 90 degree angle down there. The sketched illustration is done. So let's move on to the part B. Calculate to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, so that's gonna be important to come back to again. This time, instead of being to the nearest degree, they're saying to the nearest tenth of a degree. What are we looking for? We're looking for the angle of elevation of the top of uh, the top of, of the top of the totem pole from the point where the rope is anchored to the ground. So yeah, we're gonna be looking for whoa. I always do that. We're gonna be looking for that angle right there, which is the same as that angle right there because 12 and 12, 19, 19, we have two identical triangles right here. So let's figure this out. Okay, so um, let's bring out that green marker. It seems to be the one of choice for figuring out that directly across from there is the hypotenuse and directly across from the angle is the opposite. And that leaves the last one being the adjacent. Okay, so uh, what are we trying to figure out again? The angle of elevation. So I'm trying to solve for this angle right here and I'm given the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So A and H is cosine. So we're gonna say cos theta equals opposite over adjacent cos theta equals opposite. Boop. Cos of theta is not opposite over adjacent. Let's do that again. Cos of theta adjacent over hypotenuse. Cos of theta equals adjacent, 12, over hypotenuse, 19. Okay, and, whoa, there it is again. We're solving for an unknown angle. So we're going to say the unknown angle equals the inverse of that function. So inverse cos of multiplied by the ratio that we have. And now we're down to calculator exercise, uh, mouse. Clear the screen. Uh, second function, cos of 12 divided by 19. And that equals 50.8. So the angle equals 50.8. And I've got my calculator set to round to one decimal place, which is perfect here uh, because it does say to one decimal place. Good, so that is the answer to this one right here. The angle is 50.8, but again, we need to write down the angle of elevation to the top of the totem pole is 
0.8 and don't forget the units they are degrees so we can put them up there there is final answer okay what about part that should have a C down there so right here that should be a C determine to the nearest 0.1 of a meter so the tenth of a meter the length of the totem pole so what is the length of the totem pole so we want to know how high is what's the well actually it doesn't say the height uh, before it was placed in the ground so that means the entire length before it was placed in the ground so that means we need to not only include the height of this but also that extra two meters that's down there so the triangle that we has formed is all above ground so we're just going to solve that side the opposite right here and then we'll add to that two meters very simple actually okay so in this case we're dealing with this angle that we now know is 50.8 okay we need to solve the opposite and i i have both the adjacent and the hypotenuse so really i could use either of them so i'm going to use uh the sine law or sine formula so sine of the unknown angle equals opposite over hypotenuse sine of the angle which is 50.8 equals opposite Okay, so from this 50.8, opposite is unknown, so we'll call that x in this case, and over the hypotenuse, which is 19. So just multiply both sides by 19. That's going to cancel everything on the right-hand side. Isolating x alone on one side of the equal sign, and this is now just a calculator exercise. So... Let's clear this out and go 19 sine 50.8 equals 14.7. So x equals 14.7. Now it's to the nearest 0.1, which is where we're at right there. Uh, the units are meters. So, oh, don't forget we got to add two meters to that which is going to equal 16.7 meters almost forgot that okay so the height of the totem pole is 16.7 meters final answer All right, well, isn't math fun? Question number 19 in January 2003, who cares? Okay, we don't need to know when, but there is a building in Rockville called the Metro Building, and uh, it was the tallest building, but it has been, a developer has been commissioned to build a taller one. Okay, well, let's see. How are we going to draw this? Well, I'm thinking we got ground and then a building and then a uh, taller building. Nice. Okay, so does it tell us what other information do we have? Well, I've got that. Uh, I got the small one, which is called the Metro Building. So let's put an M right here so we know that's the Metro and the other ones being commissioned by this Gamma, Gamma Pro company so we'll call this the G building uh, now it says from the top of the Metro building okay so from the top of the Metro building uh, there's an angle of elevation to the top of the Gamma Pro building so remember we make a horizontal sight line okay and then we basically make this angle of elevation going up to the top like that okay and it said that that was 24 degrees 
All right, so next it states that, uh, well, first of all, let me just highlight this one, uh, angle of elevation to the top of the building is 24 degrees, and now it says the, there's an angle of depression this time to the foot of that building, and it's 56 degrees. So essentially what we're doing again is from that line of sight, we're gonna be going down to the foot of the building, which is the bottom of that building. Now, don't forget that from that line of sight, oops, he's going up, that is my angle of elevation. So this is the angle of elevation. And going from that line of sight down, that is my angle. We're gonna write that right here, angle, of depression so it says that that is 56 degrees okay so now we know that that is going to form uh, two right angle triangles right there and what is it stating it's stating to us here uh, if the buildings are 45 meters apart okay so it tells us they are 45 meters apart determine the height to the nearest meter so height to the nearest meter and they are 24 meters apart. So that means that distance between here and here is going to be 24 meters. Okay, now if that's 24 meters, that means that line right there going between the two buildings is also 24 meters. So basically what we gotta do is calculate that height on that triangle and that height on those triangles and then we're going to add those two together and that will give us uh, determine the height of each building well x uh, right here is also going to be x over here so that would be the height of the x on the g building there this lower triangle is going to be the height of this m building and then we're going to calculate y add it to x and that'll be the height of the g building okay Sounds confusing, but it's not really that confusing. So let's take a look at these triangles. And again, if you want to pull them out, you can, but in this case, I'm not going to. So what do we got? Well, coming down from the 90 degree, that's going to be my hypotenuse. Directly across from my angle is my opposite, which means that 24 is going to be my adjacent. Okay, so what do I need to solve? I need to solve the opposite. I'm given the adjacent, that means I'm gonna be using tan. So tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 56 degrees equals opposite, which is that X over the adjacent, which is 24. Uh, why do I put 24? It says they're 45 meters apart. My bad. 45, which means this would be a 45 in there, not a 24. Sorry about that. Okay, lucky I caught that. That's going to be 45. Multiply both sides by 45, and we cancel out the 45s, leaving us with x equals 45 times the tan of 56. So again, clear that. 45, 10, 56, and we get 66.7, and we're talking about meters, and now we just want to look at this and make sure it says to the nearest meter, so right here it's saying to the nearest meter, not to the nearest tenth of a meter, so the 7 right there is going to uh, cause that 6 to go up by 1, so really x is going to equal 67 meters okay now that's the first part of our question and below this I would write in that the height of what did they call this building metro building the metro building is 67 meters final answer 
Okay, now let's take a look at the next one, which is the upper triangle right here. And we've got an angle of 24 degrees. We've got an adjacent of 40, what was it again? 45, and we've got the opposite, which is Y. So again, we're gonna be using 10. Okay, so just because I'm running out of space, I'll start up here. 10 of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. 10 of 24 equals opposite, which is Y, over the adjacent 45. Multiply both sides by 45 again. They cancel on the right-hand side, leaving us with Y equals 45, 10, 45, or 24. 45, 10, 24, I'll clear this, 45, 10, 24, and it tells us that that height is going to be 20. Okay, so in this case, Y equals 20. And now what I need to do is add that to this. So 67 plus 20 equals 87. So the answer to this one, the height of building G is 87.0 meters. I don't need the point zero. 87 meters. Final answer. Beautiful. All right, question number 20. I hope this one has something different than a triangle, but let's see what happens here. Two trees in the park. Well, there we go, trees, and they're 14.8 meters apart. So, well, weird, we got ground. We got a tree. I'm sure one tree is bigger than the other. It's usually the case. And if you want to get all fancy, you can put some little leaves on the trees if you want to, just to. All right, so what does it say? They're 14.8 meters apart. So that's going to be down here. So the, yeah, I used the units in the last one, that's good. Okay, um, an observer whose eye line, okay? So this is going to be really important. As soon as you see this thing that says whose eye line is 1.8 meters above the ground. That basically means there's some dude, whoops, not that, some person, what color are we gonna make this person? Let's make him pink. All right, so there's some person right here. Now where his eye level is right there, that is already off the ground of 1.8 meters. Okay, and he's, he's standing halfway it says right here, he's standing halfway between the trees, which means that on one side of him, it's going to be half of the 14.8, which is 7.4, and on the other side, it'll also be 7.4. Uh, the angle of elevation to the tops of the trees. Now, that angle of elevation would be coming off of the horizontal line from his line of sight here. So there's his eye looking straight across like that. And if he was to look the other way, it would be going like that. Again, forming a horizontal line that is 1.8 meters off the ground. So we're already 1.8 meters off the ground when we start this. Now, on this side, it's forming an angle of elevation to the top of that tree that is 17 degrees. And we're forming another angle of elevation to the top of that tree, and this one happens to be 23 degrees. Okay, and what does it say? Show this information on the diagram, done. And now determine, whoa, it'd be nice if we had some spaces in there. Determine the height, determine the height to height of each tree to the nearest 0 0.01 meter. So this one's to the hundredth of a millimeter. So what are we trying to find? The height of this tree, we'll call it the height of the tall, whoop, height of the tall tree, and this will be height of the short tree. 
And let's start figuring this out. So go to our famous green, uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, directly across from the 90 degrees are the hypotenuses. Can you say hypotenuses? Don't know. Um, using this angle, looking directly across, the height of the tree would be the opposite. Same with on the other side, that would be the opposite. Leaving uh, this length down here is the adjacent and adjacent, and we can see it's got a value of 7.4. So basically what I have on each triangle is going to be an angle. I'm trying to calculate the heights, which are the opposites, and I'm given the adjacent, which is the same in both situations. So O and A. Tan. Seems like we've got a lot of tan questions here. So let's do the height of the short one first. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 17 degrees equals opposite, which is uh, our height, over the adjacent, which is 7.4. Multiply by 7.4. Multiply by 7.4. Cancel. Cancel. And jam it in the calculator. All right. So what do we need? 7.4? Tan of 17. Now, notice that it says 2.3. Uh, with this calculator, if you remember from, if you've watched all the previous sort of questions, I went into mode and I changed this to one decimal place. So we need this to now be a precision of two decimal places. And I'll just hit enter again, and it's actually 2.26. So we get right here that uh, this height is going to equal 2.26. And don't forget that's in meters. And we would write the height of the short tree is 2.26 meters. Final answer. Let's deal with the next one. Uh, so we'll go down here and we'll say tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 20, what does that say? 23. Say 23 up there, yep. Yeah. Equals opposite, which is unknown. We'll call that height again. And over the adjacent, which is 7.4, same thing. Multiply each side by 7.4. Cancel the ones to isolate the H on that side of the equal sign. And now, ram it in the calculator. 7.4. Tan. 23. Enter. 3.14. Height. Ooh. Height equals 3.14. Uh, the height of the tall tree is 3.14 meters. Final answer. Beautiful. Okay, here we go, question number 21, and we were hoping in question number 20 that we finally wouldn't have to deal with a right angle triangle. Here we go again, let's see what it is. Nope, yeah, what do you know? More triangles. Okay, so uh, the height, the angle of elevation, so we're dealing with the angle of elevation here. Uh, from the top of the Pi Hotel to the top of the Sigma building is 17 degrees. So, whoa, we got two buildings again. Well, they're going to be on ground. And, whoa, we got a short building. What? Come on, you can draw a better building than that. Let's do that again. Got a short building. There we go. Got a tall building. Beauty. Oh, what's going on here? My iPad's glitching.
Oh well, that's good enough building. Okay, so we're standing on the Pi building, so that's going to be the shorter building, and that's going up to the Sigma building. Uh, and if we're talking about angles of elevation, don't forget that we need to have this line of sight coming off of here. And then the angle of elevation to the top of the building would go like that. And it says that it is 17 degrees. Uh, the angle of depression from the top of the pie building to the foot of the sigma... Didn't they already do a question like this? Okay, so we're going from here down to the foot of the sigma building. And that's the angle of depression, which is coming from the line of sight down. It says it's 60 degrees. Uh, oh, the last one, I believe, said they gave us the distance between the two buildings. This one is saying the height of the pie building is 150. So we know that this building is already 150 meters. Complete the sketch. Done. Um, determine the height of the Sigma building to the nearest, uh, what is it? Tenth of a meter. Tenth of a meter. So what are we trying to calculate? We're trying to calculate the height of that Sigma building. Now, it says that the pie building is already 150, so I've got this side that's over sort of here, um, so I can use that 150, but in order to solve the top triangle, I've only got an angle right there, I'm sort of going to need to know this X right there, we won't call it X because we've got an X on the other side, we'll call it Y, I need to calculate Y first that's sharing that uh, dimension between the two triangles and that will give me enough information to sort of solve for Z right there which is going to be the uh, sort of extra height above the height of that P building right there. So uh, let's take a look at what we got. Okay, well, there's our 90 degrees, so directly across and directly across. Those are the hypotenuses. Uh, across from the angle is the opposite, and across from the angle is the opposite, which means that this Y that's in the middle is going to be the adjacent right there. Okay, so let's deal with the bottom triangle, and what are we dealing with? Well... I'm trying to solve the adjacent. I have the opposite, tan again, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, tan of 60 equals opposite, which is unknown, and we're calling that one, no, opposite is known, it's 150 over the adjacent, which is the unknown that we're calling y. Well, here we are with that variable in the lower half of the uh, ratio. So we're going to have to use sort of two steps, multiply each side by Y, and that will cancel out the Y's on this side, but I still have the Y on that side connected to the tan. So what are we going to do? Divide both sides by the tan of 60. That will cancel the tan 60's that are on this side, leaving us with y equals 150 divided by the tan of 60. So now we just need to rewrite that, y equals 150 divided by tan 60, and we can just punch that into the calculator. So we'll clear that, it's gonna be 150 divided by tan of 60, and it's 86.60, so 86.60. Um, now, what does it say? To the nearest tenth of a meter, so we want to go to that point, 86.6. Okay, now that is, that's not really uh, anything to do with our height. That is the adjacent, remember, which is right there. Okay, so let's do the second part of this, where we're going to calculate Z. Okay, so to calculate Z, that's the opposite. We're going to be using the adjacent, which we just calculated right here, 86.6. So we have opposite and adjacent again, which is going to be 10. 
So tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 17 degrees equals opposite, which is unknown Z, over the adjacent, which we solved right there. So it needs to come back down to here. And it was 86.6. And now we just need to solve. So multiply both sides by 86.6. Cancels on this side, punch it in the calculator. 86.6, tan, 17, and we get 26.48. So Z equals, Z equals 26.48 according to our calculator but don't forget we just want it to the tenth of a meter let's do that with a color you can see tenth of a meter not the hundredth of a meter so that four will bump up to a five so that's going to equal 26.5 what are the units meters um, now Remember that uh, that's actually only Z. I need to now add that to the 150, the original height right there. And so we are going to get equals uh, 176.5 meters. Okay, word problem. So what do we do? We give a word answer. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so what are we going to say? The height of Sigma building is 176.5 meters. Final answer. All right, well, let's draw this new scenario here from the top of a cliff that is 110 meters high and observer sees two boats. All right, well, if it sees boats, it's in the water. So let's grab some water that's perfectly flat and let's grab a cliff that is perfectly, oops, that wasn't perfectly nothing. Perfectly level, oh yeah. And let's put a boat in the water down here. So it says, She's two boats. Two boats. There we go. Uh, the cliff is 110 meters high. Uh, one boat is directly behind the other, heading for shore. So they're moving in for shore. Uh, the angle of depression from the observer. So the observer is up here somewhere. Doesn't talk anything about his height. So we just assume that the line of sight is going to be directly off of there. So this is our line of sight. Okay, and it says the angle of depression from the observer to the boat furthest from the observer is 48 degrees. So from here to the boat that is furthest away is going to be, what did it say? Angle of depression. So it's angle of the angle of depression is 48 degrees. So the angle of depression is that angle right there, which is 48 degrees. Okay, and really I could even draw a triangle like that if I wanted to. And since it's 110 on the cliff, this would be 110 right there as well. Um, what does it say here? Uh, the angle of depression to the closer boat, so I'll grab a different color. Angle of depression to the closer boat. And remember, the angle of depression is gonna be coming from the line of sight down to that point. Um, what is that? It's 57 degrees, so that's 57 degrees in there. Calculate the distance between the two boats. So what is the distance between the two boats? So essentially what I need to calculate is going to be sort of X down here and we'll call that one Y along there. All right, that would be Y, that's going to be the X. Um, 
well, let me just redraw that a little bit better for you there. So really what we want to do is calculate the distance between the two boats. So I'm going to have this distance to there. I'm going to have this distance to there. Okay, we'll call this one X distance. We'll call this one Y distance. And then obviously that distance in between is going to be the distance that we're looking for. Okay, and it says to calculate it to the nearest meter. Okay, so let's see what we got. Let's deal with each triangle first. So let's deal with side X. And I'm going to draw that triangle really quickly right there. That's, 100, that's 110 tall. We don't know this length X. Um, now, because this angle down here is 57 don't forget that's the same as this angle that's right here okay so i can replace uh, this angle down here with 57 degrees now remember if this is 57 coming down if this is 57 coming down to here then to finish it off to 90 would be 90 minus 57 which is going to be 33 degrees. So this angle in there is 33 degrees, which is 33 degrees right there up top. So that all makes sense. Okay, uh, so I'm going to use the 57 degrees and I will go directly across from the hypotenuse or so from the angle, that's the hypotenuse. Directly across from my angle is the opposite. And the other one is the adjacent. So I'm solving the adjacent. I'm given the angle. And I have the opposite. So opposite and adjacent, we have 10. Once again, why is everything 10? 10 of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. 10 of 57 equals opposite, which is 110 over the adjacent that we're calling X. Multiply by X on both sides. That is going to cancel our X's. And now I need to divide both sides by the 10 of 57. And that will cancel the 10 57's on that side, leaving, leaving us with X equals uh, 110 divided by the 10 of 57. Let's put that into the calculator. So 110, oops, clear this. 110 divided by the 10 of 57, and that's gonna be 71.43. Okay, now that is the distance X that we have right here. Okay, now we're going to just sort of take a look at this Y distance. So let's draw this triangle again. It's a little bit longer in this case. Okay, uh, now this angle of depression coming down is 48. Uh, right there. Which means that this angle right there would also be 48. Okay, so I'm just gonna write that into this one. That's 48. That's 90. If this is 48, then this is going to be 42 up there. What we're trying to solve is Y down here, and we know that that is 110. So, once again, we got the hypotenuse. We got the opposite, and we got the adjacent. Okay, so we are going to use uh, the tan law, because we're not going to be using the hypotenuse at all. So, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, 10 of 48 equals opposite, which is 110 over Y, multiply both sides by Y, that will cancel the Y's on this side, and then divide both sides by the 10 of 48, canceling the 10 48's on that side, and leaving us with y equals 110 divided by the 10 of 48. Okay, so now I'm going to just punch that in the calculator again. So 110 
divided by 1048 and it's 99.04. Okay, so remember, if we want to actually calculate this distance right here, and we know that the long distance is 99.04 and the short distance is 71.43, I just have to subtract that. So we'll call this D. So D is going to equal uh, 99.04 minus 71.43. So again, we'll use the calculator, 99.04 minus 71.43, that's going to equal 27.61 and it says to the nearest degree and the units are meters, so that is going to equal 27.6 meters. Okay, so that's sort of our final answer, uh, but again, we would want to write this down uh, as a word response. So we're going to resize this little guy. Oh, we left the O there. You go back up to your buddy. Okay, so what is the answer going to be in this case? Um, the distance between the two boats is 27.6 meters. Final answer. Final answer. All right, question number 23, almost done. Uh, before we move on to some measurement, but uh, anyways, let's deal with this one. It says, it says the diagram, what diagram? It says the diagram shows what? Okay, there is no diagram there, so let's just look in the book and say, hey, there's the diagram that they gave us in the question in the book. And it says there's somebody up here in the window. And they're looking down at runners A and runners B. So out of the window, we're looking down at runner A. And we're looking down at runner B. Okay, now it says here that uh, this window right here is up. So whatever this sort of line of sight is that's going to be created at that point is going to be up 80 meters uh, and 20 meters behind the finish line. So again, if I want to sort of, I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. Okay, and so if we're saying there is a finish line somewhere, we'll draw the finish line down here and we'll say there's the finish line right there. And so the distance from, whoops, what does it say there? Uh, and 20 meters from the finish line. Okay, well, we're definitely out of perspective there. So it sounds like uh, from this point to the finish line right here is going to be 20 meters. Let me just read this again carefully. Okay, the diagram shows two marathon runners, A and B, heading towards the finish line. So they got A and B, and they're running that direction. Um, somebody's watching them from a window that is 80 meters above. That's good. That's right there. Um, and it's 20 meters behind the finish line. So 20 meters back uh, from the finish line is this building. Okay, and... Tony measures the angle of depression of the runners. Why isn't Tony just enjoying the race? Why is he measuring the angle of depression? Oh, well, Tony needs a life. Okay, uh, so Tony measures the angle of depression of the runners to be 28 degrees and 24 degrees, uh, respectively. Now, well, the word respectively means uh, in that order. So because they said runners A and B, uh, the angle of depression to A would be the first one, 28, and the angle of depression to the second one 
would be the uh, 24. So this one coming down to there is going to be 28 degrees. And this one that's coming down to here would be the 24 degrees. And now remember, we can put those angles here and here. That's how it works. Okay, so um, calculate the distance between the runners. So we're going to get this guy's distance right there. And we'll get uh, B's distance. And then we will subtract the two, sort of uh, very similar to what we did there with the boats. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's draw the first triangle right here. Okay, and it says that uh, this one is 28 degrees, which was our angle of depression brought down from that line of sight that was right there. Remember, that's the same angle that's down here. This is the 90 degrees. We know that it's 80 meters tall. Uh, what I don't know is how far is runner A from the building to where he's at. So what do I have here? Well, let's go grab some information directly across is the hypotenuse. Directly across from that angle is the opposite, and this would be the adjacent. So, must have clicked a button that said use tan only. So this, uh, what do we have? We want to solve the adjacent. We have the opposite. So, uh, tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 28 degrees equals opposite 80 over adjacent which is the distance that's right there we're going to multiply it by distance on both sides cancel those and then we're going to divide both sides by the tan of 28 degrees and they cancel on the left and we're left with the distance equals 80 divided by the tan of 28. So let's punch that in the calculator real quick. 80 divided by tan 28 tells me it's 150. The distance equals 150.46. Uh, so what are we solving to here? It's going to be the nearest meter. So we notice here, calculate the distance between the runners to the nearest meter. So if I round this to the nearest meter, it's gonna be distance equals 150 meters. So that is to runner number, or letter A. What about letter B? Okay, well, let's take a look at this right here. Uh, letter B is going to be this sort of red triangle that I have here, which is gonna be down, over, and back up. And again, there's my right angle triangle. That's still going to be 80 meters up there. B is down here. We're just trying to find out how far it is from here to there. So that is sort of what we want to figure out. This distance right here. I know this angle happens to be 24 degrees because uh, we were having a angle of depression that was 24 degrees. And that is the same complementary angle down on the bottom. Uh, so in this case, directly across is my hypotenuse from, from the right angle. Directly across from our known angle is the opposite, and the last one is the adjacent. So again, the uh, calculation we're going to be using is tan of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 24 degrees equals opposite, which is 80 over the adjacent that we're calling D again. Multiply both sides by D. Cancel out the D's. Multiply or divide both sides by tan 24. Cancel out the tan 24s. D equals 80 divided by tan 24. Let's punch that in the calculator. 80 
divided by the 10 of 24, and that's going to equal 179.68. Okay. Um, so if we round that one up, that's going to be 180 and meters. And if we subtract the two, so the distance between the runners is going to equal 180 meters minus the 150 meters, which equals 30 meters. Okay, now again, because it's a word problem, we would want to take all of this and sum it all up by putting it into a word response. And we would say the distance between the runners is 30 meters final answer okay and we're not going to worry about part b that's just basically calculating trying to see well if they've only got a certain amount to go to the um finish line uh how far how, who's going to get there first don't worry about part b all right guys last question and no joke I'm getting tired this is question number 24 I've been working on these questions for about two hours making this video so I hope you appreciate this I am tired as soon as I finish this I will upload it to YouTube so you can watch that all right here we go a lighthouse window 30 meters above the sea all right so we're gonna use a nice blue line and draw the ocean and I guess there's some land over here. So we'll get a nice green line and we'll draw the land. And there's a lighthouse right here. Very ugly lighthouse. But it is 30 meters above sea level. Uh, two boys? Now these are not boys as in boys. These are boys as in boys. These are things that are floating in the water. Okay, uh, there are two boys which are in direct line from the lighthouse with an angle of depression of 15 and 26 degrees, respectively. So we've got boy number one and boy number two. B1, B2, or vice versa, whatever. Uh, one of them's at 15 degrees, so I'm just going to change the color of that one. Oops, we'll make that one orange. Call that B1. And we'll make the other one pink. Call that B2. Uh, we're solving to the nearest tenth of a meter the distance between the two boys. So very similar to the last couple of questions that we've done. So what is that distance? Okay, well, let's see. So we got an angle of depression coming down to that. And we got an angle of depression coming down to this one. And now one of them is 15 and one of them is 26 degrees. So remember the angle of depression is coming from our line of sight. So to the orange line is shorter, which would be the 15 degrees. And to the pink line is longer, which would be the 26 degrees. Okay, at that point, we just need to solve the distance from the base of the um, lighthouse over to boy one and boy two, and then subtract that. Okay, so let's take a look at the red triangle. Okay, so it's got a height of 30. It's got an angle coming down at 26, which means that is the angle 26 right there. And now what we're trying to figure out is right there. So let's go from our right angle triangle straight across. That's the hypotenuse. Across from our angle is the opposite. And we're trying to solve the adjacent. 
So I'm going to go tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Tan of 26 degrees is going to equal opposite, which is 30, over the adjacent, which is x. Multiply both sides by x. Cancel out those x's. Divide both sides by tan 26. Cancel out the tan 26's and we're left with x equals 30 divided by tan 26. And as you do 24, 25 or 200 of these things, they will soon become very, very repetitive, repetitive and should be ingrained in that brain. And you'll never have to think again. So 30 divided by tan 26 equals 14.63. So that's the distance from the lighthouse to what we're calling in this situation boy number two. Uh, what about the other one? Well, let me shrink this down so we got some space. Okay, that's going to be now our orange triangle that we're drawing there. So I'll go grab that color. And we got this triangle right now that's going to have, again, a height of 30. An angle that's coming down from here, which is 15, which means this is also 15. And we're trying to solve that distance down here. So we've got the tan, again, of the unknown angle equals opposite over adjacent. Well, which one is the opposite? Well, that's the right angle, so that's my hypotenuse. That's the angle I have, so that's my opposite. And down here is my adjacent. So it looks like opposite is 30 and the adjacent is unknown and the angle is 15. So let's just replace the variables, substitute the variables with some knowns, which is tan 15 equals opposite 30 over adjacent, which we're calling y, multiply by y, multiply by y, cancel the y's, divide both sides by the tan of 15 to get rid of the tan 15 on the left and isolate the y. So remember, we want this y all alone, which means we gotta get rid of that tan. So we do that by dividing it by itself, which makes it into one. So essentially, those are gone and we're left with y equals 30 divided by tan 15. Let's punch that in the calculator. 30 divided by tan 15 equals 111.96. 111.96. So that's good. I've got uh, the distance to the far one is 111.96. The distance to the short one or the closer one is 14 let's just do that calculation again 30 divided by 10 and 26 it seems like it's quite far away let me just do a quick little calculation here 30 oops clear 30 divided by the tan of 26. Ooh, man, see? Sometimes you just gotta think, if it doesn't look right, double check. That uh, is 61.51, just getting tired here. Okay, so basically we got one, one, one. So the total distance, or the distance, the difference in the distance, uh, is going to be 111.96 minus 61.51. 111.96 minus 61.51 equals 50.45. And where are we rounded to? The nearest meter. So it's going to be 50. That equals 50.45 round to the nearest meter, which is right there, which equals... 50. Okay, and again, might as well do this. You know, I'm really, really tired. Here we go. And resize. Come on, work from here. Work from here. Resize you to there. And word response. Here we go. 
the distance between the two floaty things is 50 meters. Final answer, OMG. There we go. And here it comes.